Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. Today's video is another episode of my favorite YouTube series, New and Must Have Crafty Supplies, where I look for all the latest supplies that I want to try out and then share the ones that I love with you. Today's video is extra special because I have a big D stash giveaway. So be sure to watch to the end to find out how to enter. Another reason I'm excited about today's video is that it includes a whole bunch of different types of card making supplies. I've got some specialty card stock and pattern paper. I've also got a new embossing folder and stencil from Simon Says Stamp. I have the new Tim Holtz Meteor Grip and a fun color of the Brutus Monroe candy coat. So let's take a look at these new products first. First up, we're gonna take a look at the Tim Holtz Ideology craft stock paper. So these are the metallic colors. These are six by nine sheets. They're actually pretty heavy duty craft cardstock on the back and then metallic colors on the front. And I am just super in love with these metallic colors. I love the different light colors that they have. It's an entire rainbow. You get 24 sheets, so it's two of each color. And you can see there on the back, it's got that craft. This is the new Tonic Studios Tim Holtz Media Grip. So this Media Grip is double-sided grippy material that can be used in a variety of ways. I actually bought two of these. I'm going to show you different ways to use it. I'm going to show you how I organize it and I'm going to just share how much I love this stuff. It is a pretty good price for the sheet and you can cut it up no problem to use in lots of different ways. So for example, my glass mat is pretty slippery. When I put the media grip down, the paper pretty much stays where I put it. Also, same thing with like a stencil. Anything that you're working on is gonna stay put. Next up is the My Favorite Things Pretty in Plaid Pattern Paper Pad. So I love the My Favorite Things pads. I think their colors are really great. They also tend to use very versatile designs within their pattern paper pads. I happen to really like plaids, especially when they come in these bright, happy colors. I like that they have diagonal plaids and straight square plaids as well. And you can see that, of course, there are some rainbow pieces in there that are my absolute favorite. So you'll be seeing a lot of this pad in the future. This is the Simon Says Stamp Stars Embossing Folder. I absolutely love stars and I love embossing folders, so this was a perfect match for me. And they also had this month a tin tile uh, stencil, which I thought was really pretty. It's pretty delicate, uh, but I'll show you how I use it. And this is the Brutus Monroe Candy Coat in Yellow. The reason I grabbed this, honestly, is because it's hard to find bright, true yellows in pretty much anything. Inks, cardstocks, it's difficult to get a nice bright sunshiny yellow like this. You can see how nice and easy and buttery it kind of goes on the paper. And I was also really surprised and happy to see that there are little bits of kind of an iridescent material in there. This is the Memory Box Glossy Black cardstock. It comes in eight and a half by 11. And the reason I got this is because I've never had something like this before. And I thought I will use this on different cards throughout the year. It's just something fun. A product that's not new, but I decided to upgrade is the Studio Katia embellishment tool. Now I've always had the black tip on there. It's a black wax tip. And so I purchased the white tip. Again, this is not new. This is just something that I decided to grab and thought I would share with you because that black tip, if you put it on white cardstock, it will smear a little bit, whereas the white tip does not. So if you're picking up tiny die cuts, it's nice to have the white tip. So that's just something I thought I'd share. Now I'm going to share a few ways to use these supplies and we're going to start with that Tim Holtz Media Grip. The Media Grip is 12 by 10 and a half inches so it gives you plenty to cut up into different pieces. I am using my mini Misty mouse pad as a guide and I'm cutting the Media Grip down to exactly the same size as that mini Misty mouse pad and then I'm going to put it right in my Misty. So this the Misty mouse pad is actually kind of slick uh, because they wanted to make it able to be cleaned up with the ink. 
um, but the grip will sit right inside there and really will hold the paper in place even better than the big bar magnet. The other thing I'm going to do with my media grip is I can cut it with a trimmer as well. And that is handy because the Tim Holtz trimmer here has guidelines for card sizes. So I can cut it just a teeny bit smaller than an A2 card, and that will give me a nice grip when I'm ink blending on that glass mat that I'm working on so that it won't slide around. Right now, I'm also cutting down one that's about five and three quarters. I don't want it six by six. I want it a little bit smaller for my stenciling projects. This is a little holder that I use for my eight and a half by 11 colorful card stocks. And I will link down below to that video where I share why I use these to organize my card stocks, but they also happen to be great for holding the media grip pieces. And I can just write with a Sharpie on the outside the sizes that I have in there. These are just some extra pieces. Then I have those pieces and then I have inside the Misty as well. So let me share how I actually use it. So this is the media grip cut down under Underneath the white cardstock to a little bit smaller than an A2 card. You want it just underneath that cardstock. It will help hold it in place. Yes, I'm still using my hand, but I'm not pressing down and so I'm not making fingerprints on it. I'm also using it to hold the ink pad in place and letting my tools not roll around. So I shared how I cut it down for the Misty. So let me show you another way to use it inside the Misty. I am going to cut out the dies from this Hero Art set and then I'm gonna place the stamps inside those open areas. That's gonna help me line up the stamps perfectly, all of them at the same time, so that I don't have to worry about shift in my die cut machine. Then I place the die cut pieces, those positive pieces, back inside those openings inside my mini Misty, and then I stamp them with some Gina K Amalgam ink. And you can see, I'm gonna use my Debbie tool to get good pressure, but you can see even though I need to stamp it again, it's not going to shift around at all. And I don't know about you, but I've ruined so many images with just the teeny tiniest shift that doesn't happen anymore because of that media grip. Okay, another way that you can use these is on my glass mat, these little die cuts would just slide all over the place while I was coloring them in. So this was an extra piece, just a little strip. Don't throw those little strips out if you have extra pieces. Just put them in one of those little organizers that I shared with you, and then you can take them out for things like this. So I am holding the little die cut a little bit, but it is staying in place on my glass mat because of the grip. So that grip is not an adhesive, it's just the way that it's made. So it's not gonna ruin your desk if you're working on your desk, um, but it will just stay in place. If you get dust or anything else on it, ink, you can just wash it off. A little bit of water, it should come right off. Okay, here's one where I cut it just slightly smaller than a six by six piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna put it underneath the cardstock. That's gonna hold the cardstock in place. And then all I need to do is tape my stencil down to my glass mat, and that's gonna hold the stencil in place on the paper. So this is really handy to save you a little bit of that either pixie tape or whatever tape you're using to hold your stencils in place, then you don't need it on the back and the front. And I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Saltwater Taffy. Of course, many of you know this is my new favorite color. I'm using it all the time. And I'm using it on that Simon Says Stamp stencil. It's called Tin Tile. It is such a beautiful, delicate stencil, and I absolutely love it combined with the salt water taffy, but you can see that my cardstock is not going anywhere because of the media grip on the back. So I'm just gonna pull off that stencil and then check that out. All right, now let's use the Brutus Monroe beautiful yellow candy coat. I am just using a little spatula from Tonic Studios, dipping it in the cup, and then um, just applying it over the stencil. So I put the stencil back over that ink blending to apply this little bit. I'm gonna create kind of like a spotlight in the center of this ink blended stencil background and again there are these little bits of kind of like an iridescent 
I don't even know, little bits of mica maybe or something like that. It's just really pretty. It's hard to catch on camera, but you can kind of see a few of them. It does have some sparkle and shine and also just that beautiful, bright, vibrant yellow. All right, let's try out the Simon Says Stamp Stars Embossing Folder. This is an A2 embossing folder. I'm trying to figure out which side to put it in so that the stars are puffy on the front of that metallic cardstock. I think I figured it out. Yes, I did. So uh, you could try either side would look great, I think, but I, I really liked that dimensional look. Okay, I did try to sand away the metallic, but honestly, it's metallic and then a white layer and then the craft layer. So it's kind of hard to sand off to be truthful. So I really preferred the look of it torn rather than just sanded. Plus, it does look great all on its own. Like you don't even have to tear it to see that craft core if you don't want to. It's a great metallic color paper all on its own. But if you wanna take advantage of that craft core, maybe try tearing or doing some very, very heavy duty distressing as far as sanding. You'll have to go pretty hard on it to get that craft to show up. But I like these tears and I thought that kind of created a more masculine looking background anyway and I'm gonna use it for Father's Day cards later. Now let's use these supplies to make a few cards. For this first card, I'm gonna start with the My Favorite Things Pretty Plaid pattern paper. And I'm using the Fancy Hat and Shoes dies from Hero Arts that I just shared in the live over this weekend. So I'm gonna do the same type of thing. I'm gonna cut it out in the plaid and then I'm gonna cut it out in white cardstock. And the way that the hat band is created, you just need to snip the ends and the hat band will come right apart from that white cardstock die cut and I'll be able to layer it over the plaid there. The other thing that comes in that die set is a bow and there are some flowers as well. I'm gonna adhere the bow to the hat. There's also a brim that you can cut and add but for this hat I did not cut the brim I just cut the band and added the bow as decor on that hat so what we're gonna do with this is we are going to add it to that stenciled candy coat background that we created I have a happy Mother's Day sentiment from a different hero arts stamp I'll link everything down below so you can check it out and I've created a sentiment strip with that that I'm gonna use some liquid glue behind it to adhere it down between the the candy coat and the ink and everything else you really want to use some good liquid glue there to adhere that down so that you're sure that it sticks this card included the stencil the candy coat the pattern paper just so much all in one for this card I am going to use the ink blended panel that we created and mat it on some white cardstock treat it with some anti-static powder and stamp a sentiment with some Versamark ink and then pour some hero arts gold embossing powder on top and I just love the way the gold looks on pink I am stuck on this color combination somebody's gonna have to yell at me to get me off so I have this small vase that we colored and I am gonna pop that up on some foam tape use a a little bit of liquid glue behind the single flower to tuck that behind the vase and then I'm going to put some Nouveau Crystal Glaze on the bee's wings and on the entire little ladybug that will dry clear. I also have some dots of the Lawn Fawn Sparkle Glaze as those flower centers. So just a very simple but pretty card. Now for something totally different, right? We're going to go from those light airy colors to something much more old and graphic with a big impact. So I'm using the Happy Father's Day dies from uh, Hero Arts. It's got a shadow around a very bold Happy Father's Day. So I cut the Happy Father's Day out of that glossy black cardstock and layered it on some of the craft metallic and I didn't do any distressing or anything to that. I just wanted to use that color to stand out on this combination of the embossed stars with the torn element that really shows that craft. So I think that torn element with craft is great for a Father's Day card and I love that bold impact of the sentiment. For this card, I am going to use the amazing word die from Hero Arts. I'm also going to do some sub sentiments from their main kit, little mini stamp set there. I'm gonna stamp these on traditional black cardstock and heat emboss them with white embossing powder. 
So I have you are and then in every way at the bottom of that black cardstock. And again, with that grip in the mini Misty, love it. You could double stamp it, triple stamp it, doesn't go anywhere. And I do need to just get rid of some of that anti-static powder tool that I use. But once you do, look at how that just pops off the black there. So again, the embossed stars, the glossy black, and the torn craft, I just think they go really, really well together. And then that metallic just pops off the card there. So it'll end up saying, you are amazing in every way. And I am using black foam squares behind those little sentiment strips so you won't see white peeking out from the back. And now let's talk about the giveaway. First of all, I want to apologize. I can only offer the giveaway for domestic US subscribers. As many of you know, shipping has become absolutely astronomical and I simply can't afford that for these types of giveaways. However, every time I hit a 10,000 subscriber count, I do a big gift card giveaway. So to get to the next one, which is at 30,000, please share my channel with your crafty friends in your crafty groups, share individual videos, and that will really get the word out and we'll be at 30,000 before you know it. Today's giveaway includes lots of gently used items that I simply don't have room for anymore. It also includes things that I have doubles of. Sometimes I purchase something and the company that I purchased it from also sends me one, so I have two, or I simply accidentally buy two <laughs> on my own. So there are some new items included in this box as well. So there's a Google form in the YouTube description box below the video. If you wanna enter the giveaway, just fill out that form and you will be entered and good to go. Per YouTube rules, being a subscriber is not required to enter the giveaway. However, if you like seeing new card making supplies, tips, tricks, and techniques, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. As always, I wanna thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Oh dear. I'm sure I'm forgetting something here. Okay, I mean, one more time. One more time. One more time. I am quite sure that I forgot something.